Mushroom Wonderland. Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. If you're new to this channel, uh, what we talk about here is mushrooms, mostly wild mushrooms. My name is Aaron Hilliard. I am the creator of Mushroom Wonderland here on YouTube, also on Instagram and on TikTok. And uh, I have been foraging mushrooms since I was about eight years old. My grandma got me into it as a kid. Uh, in my teenage years, I discovered different mushrooms that kind of really caught my attention in a different way. I continue to forage uh, and picked edible mushrooms all my life. I became the vice president of the local mycological society. I'm really active on Facebook in the identification groups and, uh, and I lead forays um, around the county uh, in the fall time just as a volunteer. What I like to do on this channel here is to go out into the forest and discover mushrooms. We talk about certain edible wild mushrooms that people might be trying to forage. We talk about poisonous or deadly mushrooms that people want to learn to avoid. We talk about just strange and interesting mushrooms and all the different uses for mushrooms. I like the hunt of it, you know, it's kind of like treasure hunting or Easter egg hunting for adults. It gives you a good excuse to be in the woods connect with nature and discover something about the woods around you. Also, you can come home with something really good for the dinner table if that's what you're into. So right now it is June and I'm in Washington State right down in the Puget Sound on the Kitsap Peninsula. And over this past week, uh, during multiple different walks with my dog or whatever out in the woods, I came across various mushrooms. So I'm just gonna do a little array of mushrooms that might be growing in the woods near you. If you live on the west side of the Cascades, anywhere from Northern California up to British Columbia. These mushrooms could potentially be growing in a forest near you. There's a lot of foraging videos on the channel, so make sure that you hit that subscribe button if you're new and interested in this kind of content. Give a thumbs up if you like this kind of stuff. Leave a positive comment, it helps me know what you wanna learn about, uh, what's growing in your area, and also it just kinda helps the algorithm to make the channel grow. We have a unique and diverse mycoflora that grows here in the Pacific Northwest, and so this channel kinda caters to this region, although a lot of these mushrooms can be found all around the world. Uh, it's just sometimes they associate with different trees or plants, Sometimes they grow in different seasons and in different habitats, and oftentimes they look alike, but the species is actually different. So don't use this video as a definitive field guide. Make sure that you do your own research. On this video, this is just kind of for entertainment and to give you an idea of what might be out there. Some of these mushrooms can be really delicious, and some of them can be really dangerous. Let's go take a look at this footage of mushrooms that I've seen throughout this last couple of weeks here in Washington State. Identify them, tell you if they're worth eating, worth collecting, and worth knowing about. Come with us on Mushroom Wonderland. Thanks for joining. The first mushroom I'm gonna talk about that's popping up right now in late spring and early summer is Agaricus Augustus. So this handsome mushroom is actually on the cover of David Aurora's famous book, Mushrooms Demystified. It's related to the grocery store button mushroom and the portobello mushroom. It's in the genus Agaricus and there's a lot of good edible wild mushrooms in the Agaricus genus. This one's got some identifying characteristics that kind of make it look like a toasted marshmallow. It's got this kind of brown scaling on the cap. The younger caps are very cylindrical shaped and uh, they can just be really super fat and chunky. These mushrooms have an almond-like aroma. So when you pick it, um, it often smells very strong like almond extract or amaretto. It can also stain a little bit yellow uh, especially where you cut it or where it gets bruised, um, it'll dry out and turn yellow in those spots. So don't be too alarmed if you see some yellow staining with this one. The Agaricus Augustus can grow really big and meaty. This is also known as the Prince. Agaricus Augustus, a very good wild edible mushroom that's growing right now in June in Washington State.
So the next mushroom we're gonna look at today is called Gyromitra esculenta. And it comes from a genus of mushrooms known as false morels. This mushroom's often called the brain mushroom because it looks a little bit like brains. It's got all these contorted wrinkles in the cap, but never really any crevices or holes like an actual true morel. This one is in the genus of false morels because it can sometimes be confused with a morel mushroom and it also grows in the same habitat in the same time of year. Gyromitra esculenta is a poisonous and sometimes deadly mushroom. This one contains neurotoxins that when metabolized by the human digestive system turn into a type of hydrazine, monomethylhydrazine, which is actually used as rocket fuel and was discovered in World War II and used in actual rockets that propelled bombs. This mushroom is definitely not a good one to eat. It affects your central nervous system. It'll cause you to have not only digestive problems, but it could cause seizure. So the Gyromantra esculenta, although esculenta in ancient Greek means edible. This mushroom should be considered poisonous and dangerous and should be avoided. So here trail side, I run across an interesting mushroom. This is a true morel. So this one is known as Morcella tridentina. This is one of about 15 different species of morels or Morcella mushrooms that grow here in Washington state. This is one of the best of the best edible mushrooms. You can see if you look at that cap, how different it looks from the false morel or Gyromitra esculenta. This one actually has holes in it it's kind of like little pits and ladder systems. This one would be called a blonde morel, but the characteristics of this particular species, it starts out really blonde like this and then can turn kind of an olive color and it even becomes more brown with full age. So the Morcella tridentina growing in the western Washington woodlands uh, amongst the conifer trees. This can be a really delicious wild edible mushroom. And it's thought that this mushroom is actually even saprotrophic, so that means it doesn't need a tree in association with it to, uh, to produce beautiful fruit like this. It just kind of lives on decaying matter, although it seems to like certain habitats more than others. So the Morcella tridentina still growing at this time of year. It's just a really late season in Washington State for morels but it's a wonderful thing because they're one of the best edible wild mushrooms that you could possibly find. So go out and if you find mushrooms that look like this, definitely gather those and make sure that they are true morels, but you're gonna thank yourself after you eat those. So the next mushroom that we're looking at here is known as the deer mushroom. That's the common name. The scientific name for this mushroom is Pluteus cervinus or the Pluteus. Uh, this is a family of mushrooms known as the Entolomiaceae, a pink spored mushroom that grows typically on wood here in Washington state. It's actually a worldwide genus, but we happen to have a few species that grow here in Washington state. This one is the most common of them known as Pluteus cervinus. There are other Pluteus mushrooms. One thing that they all have in common is that underneath here on these kind of whitish gills is that they actually will turn kind of a pink color with maturity. You'll notice that the gills do not attach to the stipe or the stem of this mushroom. And there is no ring. This mushroom's always growing off of rotting wood and it's gonna have a pink spore print. So if you take this cap off of the stem and you lay it down on a piece of foil or on a mirror or even on a piece of white paper, it's gonna leave behind a pink spore print. These are not uh, really desired, but they are edible. So you could eat this if you wanted to, although I've never really heard of anybody enjoying the Pluteus cervinus. So that one's a deer mushroom, um, partially because 
deer are thought to eat them, and also because under a microscope, the chylocystidia on the edge of the gill looks a little bit like a deer antler. This next mushroom we're gonna have a look at is in the family Amanita, which is known to be one of the most deadly genus of mushrooms. Amanitas contain death caps and destroying angels, although this one is known as a panther cap. In the Northwest, it's known as Amanita pantheranoides. Out East, they call it Amanita pantherina. If you prepare it in the right way, it is said to have some psychoactive qualities, but every reputable field guy in the world is gonna classify this particular brown mushroom with white spots as being toxic. It contains iobitanic acid, it contains muscimol, which will upset the human digestive system. So the Amanita pantheranoides, or the panther cap, resides on a long list of other Amanitas that should be avoided. You should know the Amanita genus because of the bulbous base, the very obvious veil on the stipe, the white gills, and oftentimes these white spots all over the top of the cap. Make sure you know what you're doing before you go picking and trying to ingest any mushrooms like these. You should know the Amanita genus because of the bulbous base, the very obvious veil on the stipe, the white gills, and oftentimes these white spots all over the top of the cap, which happen to be called veil remnants. They're not any special type of poison, they're actually from the same flesh as the rest of the mushroom. They just kind of burst out of a thing called a vulva. So Amanitas grow in a certain way where they start out like an egg. They burst out of a thing called the vulva. The remains of that egg stay attached to the top of the cap. And as it grows, the cap separates from the stipe and it tears away from a membranous layer known as the partial veil, which protects the gills as the spores develop then the mushroom is at full maturity and it will drop white spores. All Amanitas have white spores and white gills. So this is a beautiful yet dangerous genus of mushrooms that also contains a few edible species, this not being one of them. The genus Amanita contains some of the most deadly mushrooms in the entire world. So these are some interesting mushrooms growing trail side. These are known as rhizosibi because of the rhizomes on the bottom of the stipe. Again, the stipe is the stem. So this mushroom has these long rhizomorphs that look like roots on a plant, but they're actually kind of more like the stem of a piece of fruit. They just connect these mushrooms to the mycelium that's actually the body of the mushroom which is growing underground. Edibility is not really known on these mushrooms as they haven't been studied very much. This particular patch I uploaded to iNaturalist so that mycologists and scientists could potentially find more of these mushrooms to do more in-depth studies. They're not usually found in a, any quantity which would be worth gathering to eat. But it is a unique feature that they have this big cluster of roots on the base of the stem, making this genus named after its main characteristic feature Besides the funnel-shaped cap and the white spores, this will definitely have a big cluster of roots or rhizomes, which would give the name to this genus, Rhizosibi. So this next one we're gonna look at is a very interesting fruiting body that we can't even technically call a mushroom. This is actually a lichen, and its common name is the lichen agaric. 
Its scientific name, Lycanum phylla umbellifera, is quite a mouthful, but one of the most beautiful names in all of mycology, if you ask me. This mushroom is not a fungus in the traditional sense, in that it does not have a mycelium that lives in the wood. This mushroom is simply attached to the surface of the wood by a lichen. It's microscopic, but if you look close, you can see the little tiny green balls that produce this little fruiting body. It actually creates spores and it sends them out to create more lichen that grows on dead coniferous stumps like this one. They seem to have been fruiting all the way since March and I'm still seeing them growing on green stumps like this in the coniferous forests. So the Lycanum phyla umbellifera, one of the most beautiful names and a really unique and beautiful looking fruiting body, although this isn't a mushroom. Right down here, growing among the dead wood and moss and peat-covered soil of this mature conifer forest, is a genus known as Hyphaloma. These mushrooms are commonly known as the sulfur tuft, and they are considered toxic. They can cause really bad gastrointestinal upset, and are actually one of the more toxic mushrooms that we have growing wild native to the Pacific Northwest. Keep in mind, it isn't dangerous to pick mushrooms, just make sure you don't ingest them. These ones are pretty young, but the gills underneath can get a fluorescent looking yellow and they actually have a really dark purple brown spore print, although when they're this young you can't see the color of spores yet. So these mushrooms like to grow in big clusters like this. They often grow in wood chips and in urban areas, but they also love to inhabit the forest and they're always growing off of dead wood. Hyphaloma fasciculari or the sulfur tuft, another wild mushroom that grows here in the Pacific Northwest in June that should be avoided, it will mess you up. Hey, so thanks for joining that video and I hope that was interesting and informative to you. Maybe you have a little better grasp on what kind of mushrooms are growing out here in the forest right now. Uh, which ones are edible and some that are poisonous and some that you just probably wanna leave alone because they're no good to eat. Thanks for joining us on this video and we'll see you on the next one. Much love everybody, peace out.